Good afternoon. It looks like it is connected. I'm so glad that you took time to stop by today and to just let us study the Word of God together. Avery, I'm glad you're here. You see it's on and uh, thankful for that. I know some of you others will be joining us and just excited to see some of the truths that God has for us today. If you noticed on the thumbnail for today, we're going to talk about mind control. You know, you and I often let other people or circumstances control our mind. But as we're talking through this book, Trusting God Through Troubled Times, we can trust God for all that He is and all that He does, even when life doesn't go our way. Otherwise, we so easily are letting those circumstances or people that annoy us control our minds. They are the ones who cause us to get angry. And you, you, you respond or we respond, you make me so angry. But, friend, the reality is that each of us, no matter how we act or respond, are accountable for our thoughts. You aren't necessarily accountable for what comes into your mind as a thought, but what you're going to do with that thought is something you're accountable for. Back in 1865 to 1936, Rudyard Kipling lived. Uh, he was uh, a media man. He wrote uh, for newspapers and some other things. And during the war, there was a military raid against the Boers in South Africa. And uh, this poem that Rudyard wrote was really inspired from that whole event. He says, If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. As Rudyard wrote this poem, in fact, some of it is with language we don't always use, but it's such a challenge if you stop and think about it. You can find it. It's a free uh, poem that you can find anywhere on the internet entitled If. But if you stop and you think about the realities of this poem, if you can do all of these things, it's not these circumstances that are controlling you. It's not the people that are controlling you, but rather it's you who are directing your thoughts. In our Bible study today, it's not just the focus on you directing your thoughts. It's you directing your thoughts to God himself and through his power so that your thoughts can be like Christ. Here on Quiet Time Quotes, we often talk about developing the mind of Christ. That's something God wants us to do each day. Well then, friend, who controls your mind? Is it your circumstances? Or those difficult people in your life? Or is it God? Again, 2 Corinthians 10.5. You can look that up at a later time. But it talks about how we are responsible to pull down the ungodly thoughts. Those thoughts that are against God. But again, sometimes thoughts just pop into your head. But it's then that you're accountable for what you do with them. And today we're going to talk about some of those things. This Bible study today really is based on the passage Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9. As we stop and we think through this passage, there are a lot of great truths. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. 
Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. You know, we stop and we think through this passage. Again, it talks about thinking. We are to go through life directing our mind instead of just letting it go here and there and whatever comes to mind, we just let it control our thoughts. That's where we'll get into this today. Talking about a number of words that start with the letter P that can point us back to the Word of God so we can develop the mind of Christ. Before we get into the Word this afternoon, would you pray with me as we look to God and ask Him to teach us to let Him control our minds. Father, we do thank you for your love. I thank you for this opportunity we have to study your Word. God, I pray that you will continue to make a difference and change us. God, would you mold us to be like you? As today we talk about mind control, really directing our minds so that you can control them. God, I pray that you will help us to live for you. Teach us. Convict us of areas that we aren't letting you control our mind. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trusting God through troubled times. The Bible study that we are going through, you know, we stop and we think through that. Uh, the book itself is on the thumbnail. You can see that. You can pick that up anywhere. Uh, Watchmen on the pod. I'm glad you're able to be here with us here this afternoon. As we study chapter 3 of this book written by Pastor R.B. Willett, thankful for him and really this message that he preached on who controls the mind. It's got to be God. Not just us. Not our circumstances, but back to God. Number one here this afternoon, we're going to look at the prohibition. There's something you're not supposed to do. Well, what is that? Back in verse 6, it says, be careful for nothing. And this word careful deals with a different terminology, a different definition than what we often think of with careful. The King James Version was translated in 1611. And yes, it was then English, but it was a little different English. And so some of those words had a little different meaning. They have changed over the year. Here when we talk about careful today, we talk about you make sure you're cautious. Make sure you really pay attention. Well, here when we think about this word careful, it really means being full of worry and cares. So here the Apostle Paul says, don't be full of worry or cares. Because then he goes on and he says, be careful. So be full of worry and cares for nothing. Again, the Greek word nothing that Paul used, it means not even one, not at all, which really covers all worries. Now remember, where was the Apostle Paul when he wrote the book Philippians, what we call the book? He wrote this letter to the church at Philippi. Where was he located? Was he out in freedom? Was he just having a good old time? Well, if he's in house arrest or if he's in prison, we've got this idea that there could have been a lot of mental pressures. You think about the circumstances in your life that cause pressures, whether it's the situations going on with the pandemic, wh whether it's financial situations in your own life or other struggles. We stop and we think about this. If Paul understood that he didn't have to worry for anything, then friend, neither do you and I. But it's not just stop worrying. But again, all of these things, mind control goes back to who's controlling your mind. You direct it to God so that you have the mind of Christ. You know, we stop and we pause and we praise God for who He is and all that He does. Think about driver's training. Now, I know some of you may not have had driver's training yet, uh, but as you stop and you think about driver's training, I remember when my instructor was telling me to drive. And you don't look right at the hood. You look at the distance. You find something way off in the distance and you focus on that. Because you end up driving towards what you're looking at. If you look right in front of the car, you might drive to that, I mean, and then you might swerve all over, and where is it going? You turn your head and you look, and you end up steering that direction as well. Well, friend, it's the same with your mind in life. You get so focused on the situations around you, then you are full of worries and cares. But be careful for nothing, Paul says. When was it that Peter began to sink? Remember when Jesus Christ walked out on the water and Peter said, Lord, if it really is you, would you call me to come walk to you? And Jesus beckoned him and said, come unto me. So Peter stepped out of the boat. Can you even imagine the the thoughts in his mind. It's a stormy night. It, what happens when you step on the water if it's flat? 
but here's the storms and the waves are going all around and the wind. But he walks to Jesus by faith. But when he gets his eyes on the situation off the Lord, that's when he begins to sink. And, you know, we stop and we think through that. We are not to worry because that worry then begins to control us. It directs us away from God. So in this time of pandemic, in this time of difference and, and change, God wants us to be focused on Him, not just on ourselves, not just on the things around us, but ultimately on God Himself. So the prohibition. But then we see in this passage the prayer. If you're going to allow God to control your mind, you've got to pray. Spending time in prayer. Again, back here in verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Friend, does God want to know your requests? Well, of course he does. Does God already know them? <laughs> yeah, God knows everything. But friend, he wants you to pray to him. He wants you to communicate your need. We think about the self-sufficiency of God. He does not need you, friend. But in his love, he seeks you. But friend, you need him. And so you seek him. We see here God says pray. So worry about nothing by praying about everything. <laughs> you can pray about everything. What what'd you do when you got up this morning? Did you pray? I remember one of my classes in Bible college... The study of prayer. One of our assignments, and granted it was an honesty assignment, but one of our assignments was we had to pray every morning right away when we got up. Now knowing me and my brain, I was going to not do that and I was going to miss that whole grade then because I was going to be honest about it. So every night I put a little string around my foot and tied my foot to the bed. Now I never ended up falling on my face when my alarm and I jumped out of bed. It always just reminded me that I needed to pray. Friend, maybe you need some simple reminders in your life to pray. If God's going to control your mind, you need to pray to Him. Bring your requests to God. Because He is concerned about every part of your life. You can set aside a regular time to pray. Maybe it's in the morning. Maybe it's in your room or a, a study or the living room in your chair or wherever it may be. But there's also the ongoing prayer. Philippians, or Philippians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Now again, that doesn't mean you can't do anything else. But your first thought in a situation, pray, pray. There were some things even in my life this morning that I was stopping and thinking about, and the Lord directed me to pray for someone. In fact, one of the people God directed me to pray for and challenged me to pray for was someone I haven't seen in years. But God wants you to always be right there to pray without ceasing at any time. Because when we pray without ceasing, that's putting our, directing our mind to go back to God. And that's when God can do a great work in you. When you pray, you're taking to the one who can make the difference. You're taking your request, you're taking your needs to the one who can make a difference. When you worry, you can only make so much difference in your life, can't you? Oh, what a Savior that we can love and talk to Him all the time. Some people tell people about all their problems. Some people tell God. Some people ask people to pray, and yet they'll pray themselves. But some people just tell other people, and they don't talk to God. Well, friends, it's God who can make the difference. Talk to God, because He's the one who understands. In fact, we're reminded in the book of Hebrews that Jesus even understands the very feelings of our infirmities. He understands what you're feeling, friend. And yet He has the power to do something about it, to help you. The Lord is my helper. In fact, we see that throughout the book of Psalms constantly. But in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, we're reminded God is our helper. He never leaves or forsakes us if we know Jesus Christ as Savior. So friend, that's how you can go through troubled times and experience peace. Not like the world has, because the world doesn't understand the peace that God gives. So we see the whole idea of the prohibition and the prayer. But R.B. Ouellette, as he's teaching through this book, he points out Daniel and how Daniel prayed. Times weren't always easy for Daniel. In fact, was there a prohibition against him praying? Well, yeah. And yet in Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 and 11, 
he still prays to God. And yet, he was God. But who was always watching? God was, and God took care of him. In fact, if you know the, the events of Daniel and his life, you know that God rescued him from the lion's pit. The lions did not eat him. But again, here's a man who brought his troubles to God. Instead of just, oh, I better not do this, or I, I gotta be cautious. No, he realized, even like the apostles realized in the book of Acts, we ought to obey God rather than man. He spent time praying to God. So friend, will you let God control your mind? Will you let God do the work that only he can well, then this passage goes on. If you're going to, again, let God control your mind, then there's the praise. Remember back in verse 6, it said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? Yeah, it's with thanksgiving. You know, we stop and we think through the realities of this. God wants us to praise Him. We're coming up to the month of November soon. Maybe one of your favorite holidays you enjoy Thanksgiving. Maybe it's because you eat the, the pies or the turkeys or whatever else it may be. But we stop and we think through the blessings that God gives. We praise Him for those. But have you ever given thanks to God before He answers your prayer? One of the things we try to do in our service on Wednesday evening is take a time of praising God. Yes, for the things He's done but for who he is. Because we need to get in the habit of directing our minds back to God instead of letting our circumstances and the discouragements of the day. That's why I love our Wednesday evening services because it's a time that we can, right in the practical every day, return our focus to God. And so here, praise God. Praise God for the things he's done. The book of Psalms, I believe it is, says, The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. In fact, that was taken and made into a chorus. I remember learning that as a child. And yet, we shouldn't just praise God for the things He's done, but for what He will do. Well, you, sometimes we say, well, how can you praise God for what He will do? Because you don't know. It's very interesting. Uh, just in a small area in my life this morning, God had challenged me as I was studying this and preparing for this and reading through this chapter of this book. And he really challenged me with, Josh, are you willing to praise me even if things don't go as you plan? And there was just a small situation. It didn't look like it was going to work out the way I had planned. And I'm just like, okay, God, I'm going to praise you. You are good. You know what's going on. And within five minutes, God had completely changed the situation. God doesn't always do that. I know that. But it was just an encouragement to my heart to know that God does listen to prayer. And yes, even praise. And it was encouraging to my heart to see that God does want us to praise Him even before He answers prayer. Even before He answers prayer. God knows what He's going to do. He knows what's best. You think about Corey Tin Boom. Do you know who Corey Tin Boom is? You know, she was arrested at, during the Holocaust, during World War II, because she did what? She's, she's hiding Jews. She believed this is something God wanted her to do, to rescue God's chosen people. And so she was hiding them. She then got arrested, and her and her sister, Betsy, they got placed into a cell that was full of fleas. And yet she struggled to praise God. Oh, this is miserable, and now we have fleas on top of it. And yet her sister Betsy said, we can always need to praise God because 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And so, Corey learned to give praise to God. Well, if you're familiar in, in Watchmen on the Pot, I see you love Corey Ten Boom, you know exactly why they could praise God then. It's because the, the guards didn't come into their cell because of the fleas. And so, friend, you can praise God even in the difficult times of life. Because God knows. God cares. And that's not letting your circumstances control your mind. Corey could have easily done that. Ravensbrook was a horrible place. But she directed her thoughts back to God through praise. And God then was able to give her peace. So again, we see the, the praise, but then the protection. And that's where, where we come into the peace of God. Back to Philippians chapter 4. Verse number 7. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds 
So again, as we're talking about mind control, it's really God who gives you that peace in your mind and in your heart. A lot of people have a panic attack. Some of you may know and understand what that is. I, I'd heard about them, and I never really understood what it was until one night, middle of the night, a few years back, I just woke up and my heart is just thumping and my mind is just racing and I have no peace. The only thing that I could do that night was to walk around my house and quote scripture. And you know what happened then? I didn't let my mind and whatever fears were controlling me, rather I directed my heart and my mind back to the word of God and it was the peace of God that then came and ruled and controlled my mind. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So friend, you think about the peace of God. If you are not being anxious for the things in your life, you are praying for them, you're praising God. Friend, the protection God gives you is He gives you peace. Jewish people, what is their common greeting? Shalom. Which means what? Peace. Peace be unto you. How they greet each other. Because peace was so important. And yet, in our world today, in 2020, peace is important. But the only way you can experience God's peace is as you look to Him. First, it starts at salvation if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior. But friend, it's then not letting your situations, not letting the people in your life control your mind, but directing your mind back to God so that He will give you His peace and protect you with His peace. John 14, 27, we see this whole idea of peace that the world can't understand. It will keep your hearts and minds. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, The word keep really gives the idea of a garrison. Here's this military term again. This Greek word gives us a military term. It's either it's that safe fortress, or sometimes this word can be used as a verb, which means it's that protector. So friend, what is it that's going to protect you in your life? The peace of God. God's peace. Not just a comfort feeling. Friend, I don't want you just to, to watch these Bible studies or, or connect with our short videos that we put out a couple times a week and just feel good. But as you direct your heart and mind back to God, you can be changed and experience God's great peace. So again, we stop and we think of His peace, His protection that He gives to us. And then the purpose of this. What is the purpose of experiencing God's peace? Yeah, you don't have to be miserable. When Jesus Christ came to die on the cross, He died for your sin. Yes, so that you could be with Him for all eternity. But He died so that you could be changed right here on this earth. So the purpose. Think on these things. Again, not letting your mind run here and there from this worry to that. Don't you have something you can worry about right now? I think we all do. At least more than one thing, right? You can come up with a lot of things you should be worrying about or that you need to, how are you going to fix this or do this or work through this situation. But the reality is the purpose of this is so that it will help direct your mind. Think on these things. That's where verse 8 comes in. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things, and it lists a number of these truths. The purpose, again, is to think on these things. Think on the positive things. Again, not just positive thinking. Yes, that's good. We need that. But it's these positive thoughts that, again, go back to God. You determine what you think on. Replace the bad with the good. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, in fact, if you read the context, the verses before and the verses after, you'll see some great truths. There was this man who had an evil spirit. Well, the evil spirit left him, but nothing replaced that emptiness. So the evil spirit came back and actually the end state of that man was worse than when he, the evil spirit was there the first time. So we see this idea of replacement, the replacement principle. Those worries, those fears, those things you're being anxious about, or you, those cares in your life, you don't just try to get rid of them, but you replace them. Again, with, with the good things in life that God's doing. The Apostle Paul could do this. Why is it that he and Barnabas could sing at midnight in the prison in Acts chapter 16? It's because he replaced the negative thoughts with thoughts about God. That's why our emphasis is on developing the mind of Christ. 
Because that's what will make the difference in your life. The purpose is so that God will be glorified in your life. And you can experience his peace. President Reagan enjoyed the joke about a, a boy who wanted a pony so bad. All he could do was talk about this pony and, Dad, I need this pony and I want this pony. One day his dad finally took him to a farm. And he showed him this big pile of manure. And his son started jumping up and down and was excited. And his dad just looked at him and said, Why are you so excited? His son said, Dad, with all this manure, there must be a pony here. How are you going to look on the positive side as opposed to just seeing all the bad things? And negative things happen in our lives every day. But friend, God wants to use every circumstance not to let those circumstances control your thinking, but to let God make a difference in your life. So pray for all these things, but focus your thoughts back on God. And then again, the final thing we see here is, is the proclamation. The proclamation that Paul gives here. He, he says, If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So you stop and you think about this proclamation. The things you have learned. Paul said, Here I am. I'm struggling in life. You have seen how God has challenged me. He never claimed to be perfect, did he? In fact, he said he was the chief of sinners. But he said, you've learned these lessons because I've taught you. I've written to you. But you've learned them because you've watched me live. What a challenge. Paul taught and he demonstrated. And friends, you think about your own life. Look and learn from those that God has placed in your life. You've heard truth here today. You've read the Bible and you've studied it other times perhaps and you stop and you think about these truths. You know it, but who in your life then have you been able to watch them praise God through difficulties and not get discouraged and overwhelmed? Not letting their situations control them. Internalize these truths because it's these truths that you believe and then act upon that will make a difference in your life. The wise and the foolish builders in Matthew chapter 7 verses 25 and 26 and really that passage there. It wasn't just what made a difference of what they believed, but it was where they built then. What they did based upon that knowledge, that truth that they believed. So friend, will you know God? Because then he will give you his peace. That mind control, it's not about the circumstances or the situations. It's not about the news controlling your mind or those mean people to you or whatever it is. But it's as you direct your thoughts back to the God through his word that, and prayer that he will give you his peace. That passes all understanding, he says. Wow. Is that the kind of peace you've been living with? Is that the kind of peace you want? There's an old hymn that A.B. Simpson wrote. I can't read the whole thing right now with the timing. I encourage you to, you can download this. It's called, Once It Was the Blessing. I've never even heard it, but these words are powerful. He says, once it was the blessing, now it is the Lord. Once it was the feeling, now it is his word. Once his gift I wanted, now the giver own. Once I sought for healing, now himself alone. Friend, are you seeking God for that good feeling he can give you? Or are you seeking God because he is God? He's the Almighty who can do something and give you peace when your mind says, I want to worry. Father, we're thankful for your love. I'm thankful for this opportunity that we've had this afternoon to study your word. I pray that you will continue to mold us and change us. Help us to experience your peace, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. And that we don't let... Our circumstances, our people around us control our thoughts and cause us to worry and, and be afraid and, and have all these cares and anxieties. But God, help us to direct our thoughts back to you through prayer, through praise, and through the power of your word. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, friend, I'm so glad that you were able to connect here this afternoon. I hope that as you go from here, you will continue to develop the mind of Christ. Because it's that mind where you can go through the troubled times and have peace that passes all understanding. 
Thanks so much for stopping by today. I do look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, look for another video. I, I'm excited about the one we've got coming out Sunday morning about how salvation changes everything. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you again soon.